Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today, we have an apostle, an epistle reading, with one sentence and one phrase that is full of so much power and so much meaning for us. And it's actually really just the first sentence. Because the Holy Apostle Paul says, Brethren, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Paul, a prisoner of the Lord. This in itself is something about which we could speak and speak and speak. Paul at this time is indeed in prison, but he doesn't consider himself to be a prisoner of the Romans, a negative prison and a negative captivity, but rather he considers himself in a very positive and very blessed way to be a prisoner for Christ. The background to this reading is Rome in the time of the Emperor Nero. And you can probably remember the stories of the Emperor Nero being mad and that Nero played the liar was Rome burned. Nero fiddled while Rome burned. Nero, of course, was enacting a fierce persecution of the Christians. The Christians were being blamed for everything that was wrong in Rome. They were a good excuse for Romans not to face the fact that Roman society had become morally and politically corrupt and that it was falling to bits. Paul was one of those who became a scapegoat for the Romans when influential Romans said, this man and the people that he stirs up, these religious rebels, they are to blame. They are behind the degradation of the eternal city. And Paul, who was, of course, very much part of Roman Christian life, became a victim. Interestingly, when Paul was leaving Ephesus, the local church to which he wrote this, this letter, this epistle, just prior to his imprisonment, he actually wrote and he said to the elders, And now, behold, bound by the Spirit, I, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit solemnly testifies to me in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions await me. So bonds and afflictions await Paul wherever he goes. But beautifully and wonderfully, he says that first of all, he is bound by the Holy Spirit. This isn't a negative being tied up, being chained up by being imprisoned. It's being held by the very Spirit and the very power of God. This ties in very wonderfully with Paul's idea of this positive captivity of being a prisoner of Christ and a prisoner for Christ. When Paul was imprisoned, we have to remind ourselves that Paul was not a reluctant prisoner, that Paul willingly and cheerfully accepted the way of the cross and any sufferings that the Lord sent in his direction. That even though Paul's body ended up in chains, and think of Paul continually arrested and thrown into prison, though his body was bound by chains, spiritually Paul was in heaven. Paul, we know, had experienced heaven. He had been caught up into the third heaven. And whilst Paul is in this prison, and other prisoners are probably there, languishing, with darkness, with depression, with hunger, with physical pain. Paul is glad, because Paul is spiritually with God, with Christ, who appeared to him. Paul is spiritually in a heavenly state. Paul is under lock and key, and yet Paul has this great freedom in Christ. 
He does not rely on comfort or convenience. He relies only on the Lord. In his letter to the Philippians, the church in Philippi, St Paul wrote to them, I have learned that in whatever state I am, whatever state, therewith I am content. It doesn't matter what state I'm in, what condition I'm in. I'm content. I'm happy. And why? Because I have the Lord. I am in the Lord. For Paul, outward freedom isn't that important. Because Paul knew that false freedom, false ideas of what freedom is, actually enslave us. Real freedom, Christian freedom, freedom in Christ, demands actually that we have chains, that we have spiritual chains, which bind us, which bind the bodily and the spiritual passions. That in our Christian life we have the limits of the gospel. We have the limits of the law of God that says, this is good, but this is not. This will make you happy. This will make you blessed. But this will bring you misery. This will bring you suffering. Paul is clear that we all need to be held captive by Christ. Each and every one of us here needs to be a prisoner of the Lord. When you are dipped into that font, or when you are plunged into that rather cold river as of the other week, this is actually us willingly going in and through this baptism, we are being chained to Christ. We are being held in bonds for the Lord. And this presents us a new way of living, a new way of doing things, a new way of acting, of speaking, of thinking. And this way to which our baptism is meant to point and set us isn't the way of the world. In no way is it the way of the world. It's not the way that makes most people happy and content. And it's not the way of our fallen ego. Because we have to remind ourselves that false ideas of freedom hold us to be captive. We go out into the world and we see people who are really, really held captive by their own lives. In which they say, well I'm free. I made my free choice. Yes, we are all free to make choices. But choices should lead us to freedom. Choices shouldn't lead us to slavery. Each of us needs to look and say, despite my baptism, despite my Christian faith, despite the calling of the gospel, what so-called freedoms hold me captive in my life? What freedoms in the world actually hold me and make me a prisoner? What freedoms control me? What freedoms limit me? What freedoms coerce me? Because we know these are not really freedoms. It's this false idea of freedom that holds us in bonds. And what might these be? This way of the world that says that we must promote ourselves very often at the expense of other people. And people create an alternative me for other people to see. We create an alternative me for the sake of our CV, of promotions, of careers, of romantic success. And we end up wearing this whole series of masks. When I'm with one person, I wear one mask, I take it off, and I put on another mask for another person. We wear different hats. We are not authentic people baptised to be united in Christ. We have no unity, yodinstvo, within us. No. We wear all of these masks. This is not freedom. When we live lives that are based on image, on our reputation, on our possessions, on our riches, if we rely on impressive homes, expensive clothes, fast cars, 
We're living lives that are illusions. It's not to say that these things are necessarily bad. It's not bad to have a nice, comfortable house. It's not bad to enjoy the benefits of working hard in life. But when these things hold us and control us, they have become something else. We could also look at ideas to do with health. Health has been made the golden calf in modern society. We worship this golden calf when nobody wants to die. We are all mortal, we will all die. When people come and say, you, say to you, how is your health? It's a particular fault of Eastern Europeans who come and say, how is your health? And you have to politely answer, normal, no? This becomes a chain. This becomes a bond that holds us. The whole present COVID situation, the obsessions of this, become a chain and a bond that can hold us, whichever opinion we take. The opinions on either side can become a chain that holds us. We don't need these chains. The only bond we need is to be bound to Christ. We don't want illusory, fantasy lives. We don't want to live a fiction. We don't want to live according to a false image. What do we want? As Christian people, we should want to live a life that is ever deepening spiritually, as we enter further and further into the mystery of faith. We know that to be a prisoner of the world is to be limited, is to be stripped of freedom. To be stripped of what freedom? First of all, that we are stripped of the freedom that is expressed in those two words, Christos vos crezium, Christ is risen. This is our freedom. When Althaun was plunged into that cold river the other day, he was initiated into the mystery of the resurrection. He died to his old self and he emerged risen in Christ. Our baptism is the foretaste of Pascha. Not the Pascha we celebrate on the calendar, but the eternal Pascha which is Christ. This is what we need to live for. For this freedom which comes through being bound to Christ. True freedom. True freedom being a prisoner for Christ as Paul said. Paul boasted. He was happy to say, I'm a prisoner for Christ. He wasn't embarrassed by this. He wore this as a badge of pride. For us, we must be the same. To be proud to be prisoners for Christ. To be proud to be captives for the risen conqueror of death. Why? Because his victory allows us to live the way of the gospel. It allows us to be like what he says in this, to be worthy of the vocation. It allows us to live lives that other people probably think are weak. We heard them again in the Blasheni, in the Beatitudes, where humility and weakness in the world is seen to be, oh, a flaw of character. To put other people before you, to suffer for others, to give what you've got for others. Oh no, isn't that weakness? Isn't that for us to be used as human doormats? No, this is the way of love and the commandment to love is the summary of everything. Each of us must become a prisoner of Christ. If we are children of the resurrection, if we are baptised into the death of Christ, if we are baptised into the resurrection of the Saviour, we are baptised into everything it brings. Freedom. To be a prisoner for Christ, is to seek to serve Christ in a life that is pleasing to him. Pleasing to him. Not pleasing to other people. Not that needs the validation of others. Not that needs likes. How many Facebook likes do I have? How many likes? How many little emojis that show me approval do I have? 
oh, I must go back, there might be more than there were at breakfast time. No, the only validation, the only approval that we need is that of Christ. And when we are prisoners for Christ and bound to him, that's all we need. We don't need to be loved by others, we don't need to be liked by others, we don't need to be respected by others. If they don't say thank you, if they don't seem grateful, it doesn't matter. That, reliance on that, is another chain that we don't need. We need nothing other than God. To be a prisoner for Christ is to be given a life of freedom and not held captive by all these false, worldly, and deluded measures of what well-being means. The well-being measure. What does the world count to be well-being? Things that are good, but things that not should not dominate us. We don't need to be chained to wealth. Equally, we don't even need to be chained to health. Or achievement, success, power, influence, possessions, promotions, our public persona, our reputation, good marriages, eminent families. Or a real trap, leaving behind a legacy so that everybody can look back and say, oh they were so good, look at the legacy they've left. We see churchmen doing this, to be wanting to be remembered for their legacy for what they've done, for the decoration in the church, for the beautiful things. No, we should be remembered for our repentance and for our holiness. To want to be remembered for our legacy is another chain which binds us to the world. We don't need this. We want to be free for Christ. Just think of the martyrs. We have the beautiful icon here of the holy great martyr Catherine, whom we've just celebrated. Think of all of those martyrs whose lives you know. They were tortured, they were threatened. And the authorities said, well, if only you will burn incense before the image of the emperor, we will give you this. We will give you wealth, we will give you power, we will give you a marriage, we will give you a house, we will give you a command in the army. All of these things promised. We will free you if you will do what we ask. What sort of freedom is it? It's slavery. And yet we enslave ourselves to things. No, we have to follow the martyrs. We have to make the choice to find our freedom in what the Lord sends us by standing up for him. What do we hear in the gospel? For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We will find the true meaning of our lives by throwing away all of these chains of the world and by being chained to Christ who died and rose and ascended into heaven taking our humanity with him. This is about freedom. This is about release. Paul, Paul we know, he travelled and travelled and travelled. He founded churches. He encouraged congregations. He wrote letters. He did so much for the church. He was caught up into the third heaven and he saw things which he said, it is not lawful for a man to repeat. And yet St John Chrysostom says something which I think is very meaningful for us. If we ask, what is the greatest glory of St Paul? St. John Chrysostom said, I call Paul blessed, not so much because he was caught up into paradise, as because he was imprisoned for Christ. I don't call him blessed so much because he heard ineffable words, in heaven that is, but because he suffered in chains for Christ. We need to follow this. Authentic freedom which we only find in surrender to Christ. Freedom in surrender, does it make sense? Not to the world, it should do to us. This is envisaged in the Lord's Prayer. What have we sung not so many minutes ago? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
If we believe these world, words, thy will be done, we have surrendered ourselves to Christ. The next time you start stressing about your future, about next year, about vaccines, about passports, about whether you can fly, about whether you can do this, you can do that. Ask yourself, what do I mean when I say, thy will be done? Do I believe it? Do I believe this? When I say, da budjet volja tvoja, do I believe? The stress there has to be on tvoja, thy, your will be done. If we are held captive and we become prisoners for Christ, if we hold ourselves out and say, I want to be chained to you in the freedom that you bring, that means we have to start believing what God gives to us is what we need, and that God will give us what we need. Perhaps not what we want, but what we need. And perhaps what God will give us is a difficult time. He will allow us to go through trials just as did St. Paul. But then what else have we heard? At the end of the Beatitudes before the Gospel was raised, with those words wisdom, we heard words of great wisdom. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. What will this reward be for? This will be the reward for when we willingly say, I, Mark, a prisoner for Christ, or I, Alexander, a prisoner for Christ, or I, whoever, a prisoner for Christ. I, whose freedom is in Christ. This will mean that indeed we rejoice and we will be exceeding glad. And our reward will be great in heaven. Be strong, be steadfast, and surrender everything to the Lord Jesus Christ, who rose and took our humanity to the right hand of God the Father. Amen.